going to talk about unanswered prayer. You ever had prayer unanswered sometimes? You know, I've still got prayers I'm praying for now. But, uh, you know, I take an inventory of myself and what I'm doing and make sure I'm in line with God, pleasing Him and following Him and His commandments uh, so that when I do cry out to God, I can get my prayers answered. Amen. I guarantee you one thing, if you was over there in Israel and all of a sudden them rockets starts coming in and all that stuff happened, you'll be crying out to God. You'll be crying out to God and 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 you need to be in a position even here in America that something happened here, you can cry out to God and you got an open channel. Amen. Sometimes we get it clogged up a little bit and ha we have to get it corrected and fixed, you know. And uh, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. That problem's going to be gone. Praise God. <clears throat> Let's look and see what the Word says. You know, sometimes our prayers can uh, be hindered refusing to hear the truth. You know, the truth, sometimes you might have something going on in your life, and it's truth, and it's going on in your life, and you don't want to accept that. Well, I know uh, uh, some people in the world, they change things in God's Word so it would be like they want it. Well, they're not going to get their prayers answered, I'll tell you that, because they'll be serving the wrong God. You know, there's so many people of the world that's come up with their own gods out there. It's just awful. You know, you take, uh, uh, I was reading, or well, I was listening to some persecution that's going on in uh, some of the countries. Christians are being uh, slaughtered y'all all over the world is happening right before our eyes and christians it's getting harder and harder and uh, we're seeing more and more of it and uh, down end of the christians and everything but don't get discouraged and don't get dismayed because our god has done paid the ultimate price and we're in a position where we got the victory we're more than conquerors through christ we're going to rule and reign in this universe that God has for us. And when the curse is gone from this universe, we, the saints, are going to have God Almighty and his son Christ Jesus, hallelujah, praise God, King David, and the disciples and us saints are going to help rule this world. Amen. So let's go a little bit further. You know, we got things going on down here now. We need to get fixed, and we want to have that open line with our Lord and so unanswered prayer, you need to take an inventory tonight. Is something going on you're praying and nothing's happening. Maybe you got something going on you need to get fixed between you and the Lord. Amen. You need to pray and ask God what it might be. Look at here. He that uh, turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Now I want to tell you something. If you don't listen to the truth in what God has, you're not going to get prayers answered. I mean, that's, that's just the bottom line right there. I'll turn this air off because I know it's getting a little chilly on some of you in here. And uh, But I'll tell you, uh, a lot of people will come to you and they want their prayer answered. And why is this happening? Why is that happening? Prayers ain't getting everything. You know, it might be because they don't believe God. They don't trust the truth. They don't have faith that they need to move the mountain that's in their life. Amen. Faith of a mustard seed will move a mountain in your life. Every one of us in here, I would uh, bit to say, have had giant mountains uh, in your life. I'm just talking about some of the circumstances you've been in, some of the journeys you've been in. And I guarantee you, you've asked God and cried out to God. That's when you're closest to God, when you're going through turmoil. Well, let me tell you, when you're uh, not going through it and you're up on the mountain and you're shouting, go to God then too, amen. Keep that channel open and praise Him and worship Him and, and have fellowship with Him. Look here. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. I'll tell you right here. Let's look in Matthew. This is a... This is a real biggie right here. A lot of times when I bring people up to to uh, pray and everything, I try to get this little thing taken care of so they can get an open channel to God and get their prayers answered, you know? 
You know, sometimes we see we pray for people and, and we don't see nothing happen. We've done what God told us to do. We laid hands on, we anointed it all. We've done all of those things. But that person might have something going on in their life that forbids them from getting an answered prayer because they're not obeying God. And this is one of the biggest things right here coming up here in these verses right here. For if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Now, I'm here to tell you right now, your, our Heavenly Father has forgiven us for our trespasses. And sometimes, uh, you know, we get somebody, we might get mad at somebody or get road rage or something. But you ask God to forgive you for what happened and get it straightened out. Because there's going to come a time you're going to cry out to God for a prayer and you want that prayer to be answered. Amen? I'll tell you right now, this is one of the biggest ones right here. I, I, I preach this many times, forgiveness. Look at here. If you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Think about what God has forgiven us for. And you know, I don't care how bad the situation, you know, I, I, I've seen and heard and, and seen some terrible things, and I look at it and say, how in the world could somebody forgive somebody for doing something like that or whatever? I, I could tell you some heart jerkers, but I'm not going to murder, all kind of stuff. But the Word of God still says forgive men. The key to that, if you forgive men or women or whatever that's hurt you, no matter what it is, you put it in God's hands. That's the key, see? That's one of the biggest things. You put it in God's hand, and you don't have to worry about it no more. But you got to come to the point sometimes in situations in your walk with the Lord you got something you ain't forgiving somebody uh, about, you better get it right because the Word says, look here, for if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. I don't know about y'all, but I've been forgiven a lot of trespasses. I question God sometimes why he even uses me. That's right. But he's a merciful God. Did you know that? Those he forgive much, uh, they love him much. Amen? I want to tell you, you might have something going on uh, with somebody or something or your job or whatever it might be, and you carrying something, and you better get rid of it. You better ask God. You, you, you better give it to God and say, God, I forgive them. And when you forgive them, do even more than that. Say, Lord, I forgive them, and I pray you bless them, God. Bless us, I saw put it in God's hands you see if you don't put it in God's hands the tormentors will get you I could go deep into that too if the tormentors get a hold of you because you ain't forgiving at 12 o'clock at night you're going to be thinking about it at 3 o'clock at night you'll be thinking about it 8 o'clock in the morning all day long it's going to consume you the tormentors going to beat you to death I know I can speak with authority because I've been there I had the tormentors on me for seven and a half months one time I won't go into that either, but I'll tell you this. I got a hold of the truth, and the truth set me free. When I come to the point where I can say, Lord, I forgive them, I pray you'll bless them, and I pray they'll have a wonderful life. I meant it too. I come to that point where I could do that. When I did that, I felt the burden of the tormentors lift off of me. I sleep like a baby. You can ask my wife. I'll tell you right now. That's a big factor in a Christian's life right there, you as a Christian. And you say, well, they don't deserve it. They might not deserve it. It don't matter. God is the one that's going to vengeance his mind. He said he will repay. It don't matter. If people think they're getting away with murder and all these things that's happened and everything, I'll tell you right now, God knows everything, and they'll be in a position one day they'll pay for that, the penalty for that. Okay? So, you know, sometimes you say they don't deserve, they, they probably, some of them don't deserve forgiveness, but God, I don't, I, God wrote this, not me. He said you forgive them anyway, and it's for you and your health and your sanity, amen? When you forgive those who hurt you, you get a peace about you. You do. And a lot of times when I call people up here to, to pray and everything, sometimes, you know, when God's moving in a mighty way and 
first thing I want to do, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Lord, those people that hurt me or if I got unforgiveness to anybody, Lord, reveal it to me now and I want to forgive them right now before I pray. I want my prayer channel to be wide open, don't you? And so when I go in my prayer closet to pray about something, I want it to be wide open so I can pray to God. And I don't want to have somebody I'm angry, bitter with. I want it straightened out. Amen. That's a big one right there. I told you all about the time I went and preached in this big Church of God church down there in Saluda, South Carolina. I mean, it's a big one. And uh, I went down there and preached, and God told me to preach on forgiveness. Can you imagine that? And I preached on forgiveness, and I tell you what, when I gave the altar call, people started jumping up and hollering, this group over here and this group right here and a group over here, I hated your guts. I wanted to kill you. I've been hating you for 10 years. That really happened. And, man, they started weeping and crying and coming to the altar and forgiving each other. They got on their knees and filled the, the altar up with tears and crying. And that church had a great healing in it. I've seen it happen. I've seen the Holy Ghost. They started popping up like popcorn. And they didn't cut no bones. One over here said, I hated you and your little nosy group, and I don't like you, but I love you now. <laughs> I've seen it happen, y'all. That's right. The audacity of her wearing them green shoes in here. Can you imagine that? And won't even turn the dimmer switch down. I'm cutting up a little bit, but it really happened. I've seen it happen. I've seen the power of God move. You'll see the power of God move in your life like you never, if you've got something happen to you a long time ago. When I got delivered from demons and, and all kind of things, I got delivered from demons and all kind of stuff up in Channel 16, and the guy told me, he said, listen, Rick, you've got some people you've got to forgive that's hurt you even in your childhood, and you've got to forgive them. And he said, God's going to show them to you. And, and I, 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 it was like that screen right there. It flashed up. The person flashed up before me and said, Lord, I forgive them. Guess what? Another one flashed up. Boom, boom. I forgive them, Lord. Another one popped up. Boom, boom. I forgive them, Lord. I kept forgiving a long time. I forgive them all. I got clean. And when I cried out to God, I said, God, I want all you got because I'm giving you all of me now. And my slate was clean. I'd forgive all of those people. And the power of God hit me and just healed me of ulcers and healed me, cast demons out of me that was in me. And all kind of things happened. And he baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And I told him, I want all you got. Amen. So you see what God can do for you? You got to give it to him. Some people's towed his stuff around for 40 or 50 years tormenting them. And it's hard. They haven't come in that position in their life when they cry out to God and say, God, I truly forgive them. We've all been hurt by somebody or somewhere or somehow. But you forgive them and you're going to be happy. You put it behind you, you go forward. Let's read it again, y'all. This is the bottom line. If you want to be saved and be with the Lord, look right here what it says. For if we forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not uh, men their trespass, and neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So it's your responsibility as a Christian. If you're going to obey God's word and get your prayers answered, you've got to obey his commandments, and his commandments said forgive. I could stay right there the rest of the night. That's a serious one right there. I see it happen a lot of times. People have got things going on in their lives, and they got hate and anger, and, and it turns into bitterness down in there, and the root of bitterness. It's terrible. Ah, praise God, I don't have that no more. <laughs> Feels good, don't it? You ever been there? But always remember, when you get in your prayer closet, think about it. It's, did I mad at somebody or did I do this or did so-and-so hurt me? I, Lord, I forgive them. I pray they had a wonderful time. Amen. 
Let's go to the next one right here. That's a powerful one. I could stay there the rest of the night, but I, and I, here's another one in, in Psalm 66, 18 through 20. If you got sin or something in your heart, you better get it out. Look here. If I regard inequity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Did y'all see that? So if you got some sin or something in your heart, God said he what? He won't hear you. Okay? That's what he said. But barely God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Is that not awesome when you when you pray for something and God just does something like that? He's an awesome God, isn't he? He helps me do all kind of things, and I can tell it's him when I'm doing stuff, you know. And uh, he's just an awesome God, but and he's concerned about the little things too. Do you know that? He's, he, he is a little. It don't have to be no giant thing. I say, well, I ain't going to bother God with this. Bother him with everything. He's your heavenly father. He loves you. Think about it. But if you've got something going on there, or you're doing something that goes against his commandments, stop it. Get it out if you want your prayers answered. You don't need no prayer and don't need God and don't need forgiveness. That's where it would take you to. That's a bad scene, isn't it? Look here. Blessed be God which hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. Praise God for mercy. Amen. If it wasn't here for his mercy and grace, we wouldn't have no hope here tonight. Amen. But we got it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look right here. Let's look at another. This is a biggie too, y'all. How you going to know it unless you read it and study it every day? That's the way I believe. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have uh, uh, confidence towards God. And what, sir, we asked, uh, we receive of him because he is we, because we keep his what? underline that right there we receive of him why because you love him you believe in him and you keep his commandments you love him you believe in him i believe this book from the front to the back every bit of it i'll tell you right now and i won't obey his commandments i mess up sometimes in them and when i do i get on my knees and ask god to help me and fix it lord i want it fixed don't you what you got to do if your he prayers are getting hindered? Are you keeping his commandments or are you going against his commandments? Think about it. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Amen. Man, I want to be pleasing to the Lord, don't you? I want to be worthy to go into rapture. I'm ready to get out of here now. Let's do it. Lord, come on. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, though, keep his commandments. Stay in his word. And if you've got something you're not sure about, get in God's word and say, well, he said not to do that. I better not do it. Lord, forgive me for doing that. Help me not to never do that again, God, in Jesus' name. I want to turn from it. Amen? Look right here. Here's another biggie, too. Even his disciples had this sometimes, occasionally. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, but verily I say unto you, if any hath faith, the grain of a mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence uh, to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I tell you right now, unbelief, we can all get it sometimes, can't we? We can. His disciples got it. They come to him and said, Lord, we can't cast this devil out. Why? What's going on? Because of your unbelief and what's going on. This kind comes up by prayer and fasting. Even if, I don't feel too bad sometimes. I get a dose of it every now and then on something going on, and I say, well, Lord, so-and-so had it. One of your disciples, some of your disciples had it. Help, forgive me, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Amen? I want to move every mountain that's causing people problems. Amen? I want to see the power of God move and touch uh, uh, his children like never before. Amen? Amen means so be it. Hallelujah. Look here. Let's look at this 21st verse here. It says, How be it this kind goeth out but by what? Prayer and fasting. But they had some unbelief. They couldn't get the demon out and everything. And the Lord Jesus told them how to get that corrected right there. I'll tell you right now, when you fast, it'll help that unbelief big time. So when I get a dose of it, I have to fast. And I don't like to fast. 
I can't eat, you know. Let's go a little bit further right here. This is a biggie right here. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners. Y'all see that? I'll say one that he will hear, though. Lord, forgive me, I am a sinner. That's a humble heart, isn't it? Let's look up there again. It said, Now we know that God heareth not sinner, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So we just talked about obeying his commandments. We talked about forgiveness of our brothers and sisters and things going on in our lives. And we talked about hearing the tr truth, the word of God, and believing the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we talked a little bit about unbelief. I tell you right now, you got to stand on these things. If, if you go in your prayer closet and you just don't feel like you're getting through to God, start looking at inventory of what's going on with you. You got something going on that's not pleasing to God, get it fixed. Ask God to, fi to fix it. Amen. Ask Him to forgive you. Get a clean slate before when you go before Him with, a, with, with serious prayers. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of ways how to get answered prayer. Amen. We can't leave it hanging like this, can we? Let's look at uh, John 15, 7. This is a powerful message, just one verse. I remember a pastor over there on Faith the Assembly of God preached this message, and I never forgot it. It's awesome. I want you all to look at this. If you abide in me and my words uh, abide in you, you got God's word in you. Are you reading God's word? Are you studying his Bible like he wants you to? Hallelujah. Here, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's just point blank there, isn't it? That's the way to do what? To get answered to prayer. His words abide in you. Amen. you got to have certain things uh, in your spirit. When the enemy comes at you, you know how to handle those things. Now, listen to this. If you want uh, answer prayer, have faith in God. We can see that in Hebrews. And when you pray to God, pray what you want. And if it be of God. Now, you might be praying for something that you don't need. Uh-huh. Might be something going on there. You don't really need that, and God knows you don't need it, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. But when you pray to God and you're serious about something, Tell him what you need. And if it lines up with him, look out. He's going to be there for you. Amen. Look right here. Pray for what you, you, you need. In Matthew 17, 20, it talks about that. And refuse doubt. Sometimes we can get in doubt, can't we? Sometimes we can cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, well, I'll fix it myself. we got to have all our trust in God, y'all. Trust God in everything, praise God, and don't have that doubt. If you get in doubt, go back on your knees and cry out to God and get your strength built. Get in the faith chapter, Hebrews 11, and see them generals, what kind of things happened to them when they stood with the Lord because of their faith. Look at this guy named Abraham. I can't wait to talk to him when I get to heaven, man. Isaac and Jacob and all of them, King David. I want to talk to him, man. I want to do some jawing with them dudes. Think about this. Refuse doubt. Have a clean heart and life with God and man. Amen. When you go out these doors, don't go down there in the street and go into bars or do things. I'm just using as an over example. I, I, most of us in here tonight are Christians and love the Lord, but I have seen it happen a lot of times. Come here praising the Lord and go down there in the street down there and you see things going on they shouldn't be doing. But I've seen it. And we all mess up sometimes. But when you get closer to God and get a, up another higher spiritual level of the Lord, he's going to give you strength not to do those things that you know you ain't supposed to be go doing. You're supposed to obey God and his commandments. You're supposed to study his word. And it says right here, if his words abide in you, ask what you will. Amen. I believe that, don't you? Praise God. I want everybody to bow your head, please. I want to talk to the people on the Internet.
Folks on the internet, I thank you so much for being with us tonight. I pray God to touch you, and I pray if there's anything in your life and you're not getting your prayers answered and you crying out to the Lord, and you just go through some of these things. If you got unforgiveness in your heart, I pray in the name of Jesus that you get it corrected. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray that God will touch you tonight and ask him to come into your heart. This world that we're in is uncertainty in our world but one thing's certain the lord thy god is over all of it hallelujah praise god and we give him the praise now if you want jesus in your heart just go to romans uh, 10 9 it says if you confess uh, your sins and believe it the lord jesus christ was died and was buried and on the third day he rose again ask jesus in your heart and he said thou shalt be saved he loves you so much because of that hallelujah praise god we thank you for that lord i want to ask another question i know there's a couple of you here got something going on with your back i want you to come up here we want to anoint you with oil and we won't take long but anybody else need prayer you got sickness in your body i want you to come up here we'll pray for you too but these two folks has got the the pain and steve had some pain i noticed he's moving around better tonight than he was the other night <laughs> amen we give god the praise for that hallelujah thank you lord jesus jeanette i want you to come down and some of you other folks and let's pray for these two folks they got pain and i, I just hate that i hate that pain i'm gonna pray god's gonna 